Okay, so I wasn't planning on giving my presentation as a video, but because we didn't have school today, I pretty much had to. So I had originally made a PowerPoint, but because I can't present it like I would in class, I did print it off. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how good that will look, but I will also send you the um, PowerPoint so that you can look at it. So today I will be talking to you about the CIA torture report that was recently released. So to give you a little background, following 9-11, President Bush basically told the United States, our military and our government, to do everything it took to heal the wound of 9-11. So this came down to finding the people responsible for it and trying to put an end to it and protect the country against any future future attack. So. So. Following the 9-11 attack, the CIA took a lot of actions to track down terrorists and potential threats to the United States. However, though we had a general idea of what was happening, no one really knew exactly what was happening with the CIA and with their interrogations. And now we've heard the stories, we've heard the waterboarding, all of that stuff, but we never knew exactly what was happening. So the, C or the Senate Intelligence Committee came out with a report on December 9th 2014 and basically they outlined everything that the CIA had done following 9-11. So this report is a little bit controversial because it was originally 6,000 pages yet only 525 pages released to the public. So here is a pie chart. <laughs> um, and out of those 525 pages most of them look like this. So basically, there's huge amounts of information just cut out, um, blacked out, and this is sort of creating an issue because the people don't know whether or not they can truly trust the government because they're withholding thousands of pages of information. So some of the information that was blacked out is supposedly to try and protect the United States against any future attacks. So basically, it's blocking out names, places, anything that could connect a name or a face or place to an action. So this is supposedly to help protect us against any future attacks. So, um, and this is also because the CIA did many of their interrogations in black site prisons in foreign countries. So we hear about Guantanamo Bay and the interrogations that took place there, but most of them actually took place in foreign countries. And the Senate outlined these, however, they will not be released to the public. So basically, what did the report uncover? So, the report uncovered a lot of inaccuracies and flaws in the CIA's reporting system. So where previously the CIA had reported that only 100 people had been interrogated, the report sort of found that there were like 115, 120, 125. So, it's interesting that they pointed out some flaws in the CIA. They also outlined the methods of interrogation, so in that little chart on the page, um, some of them that are common, um, wall standing, stress positions, sleep deprivation, insects placed in a confinement box, waterboarding, um, facial hold, etc. So all of this comes down to these torturous methods that the United States has used in these interrogations. And the information that was contained, like I had talked about earlier, which would be connecting people and places to the actions. So there's been a huge international response to this. And basically, it's had two key effects. We have, um, we're losing our connections with our allies, which is obviously a bad thing because many of these countries are seeing our actions and seeing how barbaric we were, how these methods of interrogation were so extremist and it's bad because it's giving us a bad reputation with our allies and weakening our relationships with them. Um, I'll read you a quote from Prime Minister of Great Britain, David Cameron. Torture is wrong. Torture is always wrong. Those of us want to see a safer, more secure world want to see the extremism defeated. We won't succeed if we lose our moral authority. So he's basically saying that despite all of the activities that happen between the United States and the terrorists, that by responding with further extreme methods, we're just being the same thing as the terrorists. 
Also, it's giving other countries the ability to point fingers back at us. So countries such as North Korea and Russia have come out with these reports basically pointing fingers at the United States that how could we claim that these countries have civil rights issues if we turn around and waterboard a man 183 times. So there's also an internal controversy within the United States. Basically, the Republicans removed themselves from the Senate Intelligence Committee um, with respect to this report after a few months of it being undergone, and they thought that the uh, Democrats were, they didn't like the way the Democrats were approaching the issue. So this is sort of interesting considering the Republicans' ties with President Bush. Um, so it's just interesting that the Republicans backed off of the committee. Also, both the CIA and the Republicans have written counter essays pointing out the inaccuracies of the report. So this is interesting because the CIA and the Republicans claim that the Democrats failed to interview key members of the CIA. So how could they really know what was happening, what the CIA did, without even interviewing the people who did it? Also, they failed to recognize or the, the Democrats failed to recognize that the CIA had legal authority from the White House, from President Bush, to commit these actions. So it's interesting because considering that only 500 some of the 6,000 pages were released, the Republicans in the CIA are saying that the report is biased and that it, um, it doesn't give a clear picture of what was happening. So it's also interesting that there is now a Republican head off between Vice President Dick Cheney and Senator John McCain. So this is interesting because both of these men have huge roles in the Republican Party. Cheney claims that we should be honoring and proclaiming our support for the CIA members who risked their lives, who did so much for the United States to protect us against these terrorists. We also have to consider the time that these actions took place. We was just following 9-11 and America was in a huge uproar, huge upset because of the attack. Also, because he was vice president under Bush, he, short, he sort of has a more presidential understanding of what happened. However, Senator John McCain, who had served as a prisoner of war in his past, claims that these methods of interrogation could not have possibly resulted in really good information. He says, and from experience, that when being interrogated and when using these extreme methods, people are willing to do whatever it takes to make the pain stop. So this is interesting because he claims that the information received was most likely inaccurate, or at least it couldn't have been that helpful. So, director of the CIA, John Brennan, has also come back with his own reaction. So, he claims that the information we received from the terrorists helped to track down uh, Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, and without that information, we wouldn't have been able to do so. However, he as the director of the CIA even admits that it's unknown and unknowable if the information could have been received in less extreme interrogation methods. So what's so interesting about this is that after everything, after the report, after the international uproar, the American people do not care. The Washington Post did a survey of a thousand people and basically 59% of the people agreed that the torture used after 9-11 was justified. Only 31% believe that it was unjustified. So this is pretty interesting because even after everything, the American people are supportive of whatever it took to keep America safe. So, what's in for America's future? There's a funny political cartoon here too. So, Basically, Obama has already outlawed extreme methods of interrogation, and this is good because we want to try and aid our relationships with foreign countries. He's also been working towards closing down Guantanamo Bay, which further helps the American image. However, Obama is unlikely to punish any of the CIA members because he wasn't president at the time, and frankly, he admits that it's not really his place. And finally, what could happen is foreign repercussions. So as we've seen with ISIS, they are not afraid of doing the most extreme and the most ridiculous things. 
So we have to be careful with our relationships with them because we don't know how they're going to respond or if they're going to plan a counterattack, considering that this report only came out a few months ago. So there are connections possibly to the Charlie Hedbo incident, and of course the United States doesn't want such an incident happening here again. So from here on out, all America can do is fix our relationships with foreign uh allies because we don't want to lose those relationships we don't want to lose lose that help especially if an issue took place with isis or another terrorist group we need as much help as we can get considering we're not even in the same continent as they are so from here on out there's nothing we can do to take back our actions but we can continue to just move forward and it'll be interesting um to see how interrogations will be taking place in the future and if there will be any counterattacks. So it's something to think about is do the ends really justify the means? And clearly the American people think so, considering most believed the torture was justified. So we'll just have to wait and see.